Hello everybody and welcome to Pet Shop Talk. Today we're coming to you from the world famous Lion Country Safari. I'm your host, Nathan DuPont, and today we'll be discussing another one of my favorites, the turtle. This is quite a spectacular creature. A 775 pound Aldabra tortoise here at Lion Country Safari named Lancelot. Now hopefully your turtle is more this size than this. Otherwise, you're gonna need a lot more food. In this video, I'll show you how to choose the best turtle for looks and optimum health, purchase the proper tank for your turtle, proper setup and maintenance, recognize when your turtle might be sick, and finally, common mistakes that beginning herpers make when housing a freshwater turtle. What do you say we get started with the how-tos for your new turtle? When going to your local pet shop, the first thing you want to look for is the cleanliness of the tank in which the turtles are kept. If the water is dirty and is not being circulated with a pump, you might want to steer yourself to a different pet shop. Now when looking at the turtles, first and foremost you want to look for the most energetic turtle. And what I mean by that is there is always a couple of turtles that you will see swimming frantically around the tank. Once you have spotted those turtles, you want to pick the one with the best color. You also want to make sure he has all of his feet and check to see if there is any damage to the shell. Okay, now a lot of you may be used to the Turtle Island Bowl. This is a very good start for your turtle, but I think that you'll find that he's gonna outgrow it very quickly. So when it comes to picking out a tank for your turtle, I absolutely love the 10 gallon tank. It's lightweight, versatile, and more importantly, it's easy to clean. Now if you choose to get a bigger tank for your turtle, that'll be fine, because I say the bigger, the better. But for this demonstration, the 10 gallon tank will work just fine for this little guy here. All right, are you ready for your new tank? Okay, now it's going to start getting a little bit fun. We're going to add some gravel to our tank. I have here a three pound bag of gravel and I went with the natural color, but of course you can pick any color you like. But when you pick your gravel, be sure that you get the larger stone gravel and before you pour the gravel into the tank, you're going to want to rinse it off. It tends to carry a lot of dust in the bag with it and you don't want to pour it into the turtle tank and cloud up your water. And the easiest way I found to do this is using a food strainer. Okay, now this is why you want to get the larger stone gravel. I already have a sample here pre-strained for you, but if you get the finer gravel, it tends to slip through the cracks of the strainer, making things a little bit difficult. But the larger stone gravel is perfect, because you can just rinse it with the hose or in the sink, and it rinses off perfectly, and you don't lose any stone. Okay, now you're just going to simply pour the gravel into the tank. And we're just going to smooth it out here. Make it look really nice, you can get creative with it however you want. And I am satisfied with that. Okay, one thing I'm probably going to mention to you more than once is that it's very important that your turtle has a dry spot to get to. And it has to be easily accessible as well. And for this demonstration I've chosen a Turtle Island Dock. This is great because it gives your turtle a dry spot and it's very accessible, easily accessible for your turtle to climb right up the sides. A lot of times you might have a rock in here and it's too hard for the turtle to climb up top and he can't get dry. This 
floating island dock also rises and falls with the level of the water, which makes sure and ensures that your turtle will be able to get onto the dock at all times. All right, now this tank's really starting to come to life. I'm getting excited. Okay, now we're gonna add some water. If you can help it, try to stay away from well water. It does contain a lot of iron, and it tends to turn everything orange, and it's not necessarily good for the turtle. So for this demonstration, I got some filtered water that I purchased at the local supermarket. Okay, now it comes to your creativity. We're gonna add some plants. Now you can go with natural plants if you like, but I prefer plastic. One reason is, is that they're very easy to clean and you don't have to keep soil in the tank to keep the natural plants alive. Okay, now we're gonna make your turtle feel really at home with a background. These can be purchased either pre-cut or they come by the roll and usually one of the employees at the pet store will cut it for you. But this one here, I have already pre-cut for this demonstration. And it's very simple to put them together. Once you cut it, you add pieces of tape to the rear part of it. And you simply place it on the tank like so. Put the tape down. Doesn't take too long. And now your turtle can feel really at home. Okay, now we have to add some filtration. Without a doubt, the way to go is an underwater filter, without a doubt. And I'll tell you why. Once you place it in the water, it can sink underneath, it's completely waterproof, and more importantly, it keeps the water circulating, and it cuts down on the maintenance big time. Now we're just gonna add this into our tank. This also comes with handy suction cups and you simply place it to the side, lift the snorkel out of the tank. That's this tube right here, very important, we lift it out of the tank. And you don't want the power on too high, you want it just right, not too strong of a current. Okay, now we got our water circulating, we got our plants, our gravel, we got our dry spot, which is very important for the turtle. I think we're ready to put, we need a light source for the turtle. Okay, very important. When you get a light source for your turtle, you want to get a full spectrum light bulb. What do I mean by full spectrum? Full spectrum means that it mimics the sun. It's not like the regular light bulbs that you would use at home, but you want a full spectrum one. They usually come in this color of blue. For this demonstration, I got a 60 watt bulb here, and we're going to add our light source for our turtle. Very important that you put the light source directly over the dry spot. We almost forgot, what if our turtle's hungry? Well, what we got here for him is some floating food sticks. I haven't met too many freshwater turtles that'll turn this stuff down. But if your turtle is a finicky eater, you can try other things like live minnows and tube effects worms. All right, well this tank's really come a long way since our turtle island dish here. What do you say we add our little turtle and see how he likes it? The most common question that I get asked is, how did my turtle get sick? Well, one, an improper environment, or two, he could have already been sick when you purchased him from the pet store. One popular problem that I've encountered with turtles is fungus. How do you know if your turtle has fungus? Well, the first sign is a whitish gray spot that usually starts from the feet and moves to cover the turtle's entire body. You might ask yourself, how did my turtle get fungus in the first place? Well, one is not having a dry spot accessible for him to get out of the water, or two is a lack of full spectrum or the heat lamp. You can help your turtle by cleaning his tank with fresh water and giving him a full spectrum source and a dry spot.
You can also get aquarium fungicides that are used for fish and follow the directions on the bottle. Another common sickness is pneumonia or a cold. You usually can tell if your turtle has a cold or pneumonia because they leave their mouths open for long or short periods of time. It also becomes very lethargic and sometimes it doesn't eat at all. Another common one is loss of appetite. The cure for this one is patience. Now as we discussed earlier, you can try different types of food and sometimes that does do the trick. If you think that your turtle may have any of these symptoms, take him to a veterinarian and have him checked out. Now one of the most common mistakes that I see is not having a dry spot for your turtle. I know I covered this earlier, but I can't stress to you enough how important it is to have a dry spot for your turtle. Temperature is also very important. You want to keep the water temperature between 75 and 80 degrees. You can do this by purchasing a water heater at your local pet store. You want to make sure that their tank is in the shade. The biggest mistake that people make is moving them into the sun which usually allows the heat into the tank but not out and this could be very fatal for your turtle. Okay, it looks like we've covered all the steps and I hope it was enough information to take proper care of your turtle. But growing up in a pet store my whole life, I've heard a lot of questions. So now it's time for my favorite part, your questions. Okay, Taryn from Florida writes, my little brother got salmonella from touching our turtles or putting his hand in the tank. Uh, how common is this and what are some symptoms? Well Taryn, that is an excellent question. First of all, in my experience, I can tell you that when turtles uh, first became popular, uh, there wasn't too many professionals around that knew much about the turtles. So a lot of people just started feeding it whatever, and one of those whatevers was chicken. Uh, some people would cook it, or some people would just leave it raw and throw it in the water. Now that's just a horrible mistake, because first of all, when you leave the chicken in the water, or any raw meat for that matter, it will start to stagnate, and bacteria will just start to fester everywhere. So. The important key is cleanliness. Wash your hands before, after, and make sure the tank is clean as often as you can get it. And make sure to have the water circulating. It's harder for bacteria to grow when the water is circulating, so try to keep the water circulating if you can. And never, ever leave any kind of raw foods in the, in the water for any long periods of time. As a matter of fact, I strongly recommend against feeding your turtle any kind of raw foods whatsoever. Try to stick with the floating food sticks and even live minnows, tube effects, worms, things of that nature are okay. But you even notice when the turtle eats the small minnows that little bits and pieces might float around the aquarium, which is fine, but you want to make sure that you clean that up because any kind of raw meat or bacteria will start to fester after a while. It can be very dangerous. And as far as the symptoms of salmonella go, check with your doctor to be sure. Okay. Gary from Long Island, New York writes, how do you get a turtle to take his medicine? Well, Gary, try coaxing him with candy. No, I'm just kidding. You can't really coax a turtle with candy. But if you do have medicine that you got from your veterinarian, uh, make sure your veterinarian explains to you exactly how to administer the medicine. And we got Ashley from Baltimore asks, how much and how often should I feed my pet turtle? Very good question. You want to get to know your turtle uh, and their eating habits. Every turtle is different. so. Uh, once in the morning, once at night, and as far as uh, how much, you'll begin to understand if you do have any extra food floating around in the tank, uh, clean it out. Get rid of it as quick as you can because the food will cause algae to grow, bacteria to grow, your tank will get ugly, your turtle will get ugly, so you will just want to make sure that you clean all the extra uh, excess out. Who do we got next here? Erica Valentown asks, 
How do I know if my turtle is a male or a female? Well, I can tell you that as much. The females have short claws in the front, whereas the males have long claws in the front, and the females have long claws in the back, whereas the males have short claws in the back. Why? Well, the females have long claws in the back because they use to dig out the holes in order to bury their eggs. And the males have long claws in the front because they do a little water dance on top of the water and flick their fingers around or their fingernails around to impress the females. Pretty awesome. Jane from Seattle asks, how does a turtle breathe in the water? Well, they don't breathe in the water. They breathe uh, just like we do. We, we catch our air first and then we go down and start swimming around. Except they can hold their breath a lot longer than we can. Every turtle is different. Uh, five or ten minutes is uh, average. Some sea turtles can hold it longer than most. But what I can tell you is that turtles bury themselves in the mud during hibernation, slow their heart rate down, slow their metabolism down, and they're able to absorb enough oxygen through their skin to sustain them underwater for long periods of time. Okay, who do we got next? Uh, Aaron of Atlanta, Georgia writes, do turtles like lettuce or vegetation more than bugs? I think you'll find if you ever watch a turtle in the wild that they pretty much eat anything and everything as fast as they can. What I can tell you is that freshwater turtles are omnivores, meaning they eat both vegetables and meat. But from my experience, I could say that the turtles probably lean more towards the vegetation side of things uh, than the meat. The meat tends to be a little harder for them to catch. Um, turtles are known to corral minnows and small fish up onto the shore so they can grab hold of it better. Uh, but they do eat a lot of vegetation. And I think you notice if you watch them in the wild, they pretty much eat anything they want. All right, and we got Lauren from San Francisco. Can a turtle live without its shell? No. Diane of New Hampshire asks, what kind of water should I keep my turtle in? And how do I keep the water fresh and know when to change it? This is an excellent question as well. As I covered earlier from the salmonella question, cleaner is better, more is better. The more often you can clean that water, the better your turtle's gonna be, the better the tank's gonna look, and everything will just work in harmony. It's much better to have clean water. Now as far as what kind, uh, a lot of people have well water, which is no good. It has a lot of iron in it, cause everything to rust, get a really uh, rusty look on your turtle's shell. If you can buy distilled water or drinking water from the grocery store, uh, that's always best. Well, if you do use water out of your sink, uh, there's certain products you can buy at the pet store. Talk to your local pet store that you can put drops into your water to kind of clear out the chlorine or any kind of harmful agents that may come in sea water so it doesn't harm your turtle. Well, that about wraps it up for the turtle portion of the series. And I really hope that this video was able to help you and your new turtle. And remember, enjoy your pet, and while doing so, have a great learning experience. If you do get the over-the-counter medications, be sure to follow the the fifth In this video, I'll show you the proper way to stroking out Dabber Tortoise's neck. <laughs> one of the most common sicknesses I've noticed as well. One of the most common sicknesses. And I hope the video was able to help you keep your turtle uh, Thumbless. <laughs> I'm thumbless, man.